Hello and welcome to the 117th episode of Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Today our guest is Daisy Gilmore of Rehoboth, Massachusetts, who shares her passion for animals and art. Welcome, Daisy. It's great to have you. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me here today. Tell us about your passion for animals and your interest in art. Well, I have to say, um, it started at a very, very young age. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I just, for some reason, always loved animals. Uh, I can't say that we had any animals really growing up at a young age. Um, my mother, we lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. And to have an animal meant you had to get up early, especially training an animal. Of course. You know, in the morning, uh, because they have to be taken out an awful lot to uh, make sure you get them potty trained. And um, having them was really hard. We lived on the sixth floor, you had to take the elevator down. And uh, so we didn't have any till I was about 16. And I brought home my first puppy that was a German Shepherd mix. And uh, I was in love. I mean, we had parakeets and stuff like that. My mother gave in to that. But uh, I love animals, all kinds of animals. So uh, I have had a passion. Uh, uh, when I got married, my husband couldn't keep me down. I brought home everything and anything under the sun, from iguanas to uh, chinchillas to fish tanks to uh, you name it, I've, I've had it. So uh, I have a passion for them and uh, to make sure that they are well, not abused, um, taken care of, and, um, and I love all breeds. And you love all breeds. I love all breeds, cats, dogs, it doesn't make a difference. I've had many cats too. I, uh, at one time, because we wound up in Newport, Rhode Island, uh, my husband was in the Navy, which is what brought us to e New England. And um, at one time, I had 11 cats at one time in my house in Middletown. And my husband, to accommodate me, he's, he's a wonderful guy, he built me a unit that had litter boxes on this unit. And they went in through a little hole that he made in my bedroom floor, downstairs into the basement, into this unit. And um, it had an exhaust system that went out with the dryer. And this way they could go to the bathroom and there was no smell because of the exhaust that went out with the dryer vent. And it was wonderful because we cleaned it a couple of three times a week. It was like six litter boxes in there, and I was able to have all those cats, and they all got along. Luckily. Luckily. Not very nice, nice. Share your interest in art. Well, that, that's an interesting story, because um, I always loved to draw, always loved to draw. And again, um, my mother encouraged me to draw, but I guess she was, uh, my father passed away uh, when I was very young. He was, I was six years old and he was uh, 47. And my mother just didn't know how to help me to grow with that. So I always drew, uh, I always sketched, I always painted. My family knew that uh, I had this talent, I guess you could say. But I got married when I was young to a sailor, moved around a lot and I was an art major in college but I just never really was able to grow, I guess you could say, grow it. And then um, about 16 years ago, uh, I hurt my back and I was forced to stay home for a while. And I was going to some physical therapy, therapy locally um, in health tracks actually. And I met up with some ladies also having physical therapy and they were talking about a watercolor class that was going to be held in Rehoboth, Massachusetts by another you know, local person, Robin, her name was. And uh, I went and I sat there and I, she taught me about watercolor. I'll never forget, she handed me a palette that had watercolors on it. And it was a mess, it was a hot mess, this palette. It had all these colors and they were all mixed. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I'm paying for this class. This is a horrible thing to give somebody. Now I could appreciate it because my palette looks worse than this palette. 
and you get to keep all those colors on there. So um, she said, wow, you could paint. And I was like, I guess I can. Show me the way. And I became addicted to watercolor um, as my primary medium that I do. So I guess I took that. And people would ask me, can you paint my dog? And I said, well, I'll try. And it became like a little business for me. Uh, they used to, they still do. They send me pictures of their dogs or cats or even humans or whatever means something to them. And um, I paint them. So I, I brought a few with me today. Uh, Which we will share. Okay. And you continue your love of animals. I love, I can't even tell Daisy, you. Daisy, what are some of the different types of pets Ooh. that you've had? That you've, uh, you've painted for folks. Oh, different types? I've painted many, many cats. You know, I'm not the only one, as we know, that, that has this passion for animals. Uh, when we first moved here, as I told you, it was about 1988, I believe, 1987. I needed some food for my, I had six birds at the time. Uh, and uh, I had two dogs. One was a uh, Cocker Spaniel and one was a, and an Irish setter. And then I had all different types of cockatiels and uh, Alexandrians, and um, I had all these birds. And so I needed food. So we lived at the time in Middletown, because that's where the naval base was. And there was a, um, a store there called the Quidnick Aquarium. I and knew it well. You, you, you really? I remember it. Gene was the owner there, and his daughter, Diane, I can't believe I remember that. And uh, I went in there to get food, and they asked me if I wanted to work there. I said, well, I've only been here two days, but sure. And they taught me a lot about fish. And so I became, with, with a few other people that had, you know, working in the fish department for uh, salt water and fresh water fish. And uh, of course, then I had fish tanks. But um, I, the only, I think the only animal I've never really had was uh, a snake. I'm, I'm not, I'm a little weary of them. I have We've had many uh, people on the show with snakes. Really? Yeah. I, I, you know, I've had mice, uh, I've had rats, I've had, like I said, chinchillas, I've had minor birds, I've had everything. But snakes I haven't had. But never say never, as they say. But so many people have this passion for animals. Um, I've had uh, my cats, for instance. I was just, I saw my first Sphinx cat in an ad in a Vogue magazine, I believe it was. And I was smitten. And I said, I need to get, what is this? This is an unusual cat. And I looked it up, and it was a Sphinx cat. It had no hair. And I had to have one of these. And they are delightful cats. Um, then, and I never had a cat before in my life. So to me, I was, my very first cat was an Aussie cat, which I got at Adele's Pet Emporium. Do you remember that one? No, I that don't remember. That was in Middletown as well. And I, I walked in and she had this cat that she just got, and it was an Aussie cat. And it just sat on my lap, just coming out of its cage, being shipped over, and I was in love. So I brought it home, and it got along with the cats and the dogs because I just thought everybody got along. And I guess if you have that attitude, somehow it carries over to your animals. It filters down. It does, doesn't it? It does. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I had cats and dogs and birds. You know, some people, they yell at their kids for bringing home every stray. No, my kids used to yell at me for bringing home every stray. Um, but so I, I wound up with all these different exotic cats and rescued cats. And um, currently, I have a, a French bulldog. Who is behind you. Yes. That, talk about that breed in a minute. Go on. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. You yes. Think? Yes. So that, uh, that is Brooklyn, my French bulldog, who um, I was watching Modern Family, the show on TV. Yes. And I said, what is that dog? I need to have one of those. So I looked into the breed a little. And at the time, I had a chihuahua, a, uh, a poodle, 
and a long hair miniature dachshund. And I said, what's one more, right? We live in Rehoboth, we got plenty of room. So uh, I tried to find a burrito, which was not easy at the time. And then I finally found a local one in Taunton, uh, a reputable one, through my vet, and uh, wound up with a little puppy, and uh, she's the love of our lives. So uh, I currently, un unfortunately, I've had the Chihuahua passed on since, uh, and so did the long-haired miniature dachshund. She lived to be 16 and a half. I love long-haired dachshunds. Oh, what a great little dog, aren't I love they? Them. Friendly and just sweet and everything, and, and she was little Maggie. Talk about your Frenchie. Okay, oh, can we say, so I brought the Frenchie for me, but somehow it wound up being my husband's second wife or girlfriend on the side, however you want to put it. And uh, he adores her, absolutely adores her. Well, Brooklyn. How old is Brooklyn? She came into our life seven years ago, and she is definitely our, our princess. And um, she, uh, I can't explain it, but she just gets it. You know, she's got that right, around, right amount of energy. Uh, she looks at you when you're talking like she knows what she's talking about. Uh, and she's just a great dog. She's a little bigger than I think she should be. She's like 30 pounds or so, but uh, it doesn't make a hefty French bulldog. Yes, she is a hefty French bulldog. And I, I'm hoping she could lose a pound or so. So if we have to take her on the plane, at least she'll get on, be able to, to get on the plane. But uh, she's a doll, and, and we really love her. And I still have my poodle. Uh, but unfortunately, Brooklyn's personality, she doesn't like to share. So uh, for now, I can't get another dog. But it's OK. We still love her the way she is. I decided, um, of course, uh, seven years ago or a little bit longer, like I said, friends from Facebook were contacting me and said, oh, we really like this this painting you painted and so on and so forth, would you paint our dogs? So of course, one day I decided to paint my dog. And I had, uh, that picture is one, and I have another one here that I painted. She was under our glass kitchen table. And uh, all I had to do was say the magic word, which is words, which is where's daddy? And she perked up right away and looked and I snap the picture on my phone. And that's all I require to take a picture is to, you know, use your phone, take a million pictures, send me some, and we go back and forth until we find one that's, that's liked by you. Avis and I have been friends forever. And Avis introduced, I said, you know, I'm looking for an art teacher. And Ava said to me, you've got to meet Daisy. So I said, OK. So I went over, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Ava has been on the show and has come with her American Water Spaniels, which are considered a very rare and a vulnerable breed. I'll tell you, she brought uh, the dog in one day. And I was amazed. And Avis is a special, special woman. She and really is. a very is. knowledgeable dog fit person. I, I could see that. And uh, <coughs> I had me. never seen that type of dog before. And I knew right away it was something different. But it's magnificently beautiful. Its eyes in particular, uh, those brown eyes, just magnificent. So I did take a picture, a couple of pictures of her dog, and recently had to put it on a little pin for her. Yes, uh, she showed it. Yes, very lovely. What are some of the other breeds you've done? Oh my God, I think you name it. St. Bernard's, I have to say, Brian, I think I've done about maybe a thousand paintings. So uh, I've, a very popular breed now are the Doodles. So I've done a lot of labradoodles and cockadoodles and, and, and all these uh, you know, doodles that are out. Um, I can't say there's a favorite. Uh, I, I, the, when I'm painting a dog, people uh, say, you know, how do you start? Well, first I need a very, very good picture. 
particularly of their eyes, because the eyes are definitely the, uh, what do they say, to the soul. Yes, they so, lead right to the soul. Right to the soul. And when I'm drawing and painting a picture, that's the thing that has to be specific. That and the nose and the mouth, you know, but particularly the eyes, and that's the first thing I paint is their eyes, because I kind of want to see them looking back at me. And it's really sad because um, people that contact me, a lot of these animals are still alive today. Um, and I wish that I could show you uh, all of them, but uh, I just, I can't. Rat terriers and um, cocker spaniels and, uh, oh my God, I could go on and on. I can't even think of all the breeds. Uh, oh, I did a beautiful St. Bernard for somebody that was just beautiful. But you see, the photos are beautiful. Unfortunately, some people don't have a lot of photos of their dogs, or they wait until the dog has passed, and then they send you a, a photo that isn't quite up to par, and so you kind of have to make it up. And I, I hate making up details because sometimes you can't capture them, you can't capture their souls, but I think that is one of the biggest things, honestly, not to sound creepy, but I try to do is capture their souls. And I think the beauty about painting somebody's, whether it be dog or their grandchildren, is their reaction to the picture when they see it. And um, I'm looking down here at yeah. your beautiful artwork. And when they see their dog and they see their eyes, they start to cry. And that makes me cry. <laughs> and I start getting all emotional. But may I show this? Sure, one? please, Joe. So this is one I did of Brooklyn. This is when she was sitting underneath the um, kitchen table, and I asked her, where, "Where's Daddy?" And she looked right up. And you got to get that picture right away. So this is a picture of Brooklyn, and I actually took this picture with me. I printed it out first, so I bring. I have a big iPad, like the 12.9 big one, so I could make it bigger and smaller. And I took this with me to Florida on one of our trips because I, one of the m most wonderful things for me to do is to sit by the pool and paint. And uh, before you know it, I had like a million people sitting behind me watching me paint. And I become oblivious to it. Time goes so fast. And, uh, and I really enjoyed doing this one. So this has become, I guess you could say, one of my logos on my, uh, my cards, my business cards. I was in New Orleans last week and watching some of the street artists and the paintings in New Orleans, the, the artwork was incredible. It really is. There's so many people with, with talent out there. There really is. Uh, people that could just sit on the street also and do that just off the top of their head. That's amazing to me. And the artwork was unbelievably yeah. beautiful. Yeah. What a nice thing to be able to do when you were there. I remember when you said you were going. So it was fun. Was it really was a great nice. trip. So I, I do, like I said, I do many of these. I try to be versatile uh, because um, although painting dogs is my favorite, but how many, you know, if they're not your dog, unless you get a commission, sometimes during Christmas, Hanukkah time, I get actually about one year, I got like nine commissions and I just couldn't do them all in Florida because we were only there for a while. So sometimes I tell people, because people sometimes wait a little too long and they go, oh, you know what, Christmas is coming up. I think I'll have a, a painting made. Well, you need a few more days than that. So, but I do do, may I? Yes, please. I, I do also do people's children. This just happens to be, uh, these two actually won awards in um, Pawtucket at the, um, the watercolor center there and uh, this is my grandchildren this was a while ago and I like doing black and whites as well so this one is my daughter my granddaughter Julia and Sarah when they were about uh, I'm gonna say three and four years old and uh, I did them in black and white because sometimes I just feel it, it's just a more serious type of thing uh, but anyway I like to do people as well and flowers well this was uh, in Stop and Shop, <laughs> I just happened to be passing some uh, some of the Gabara daisies there in their uh, flower department, and I took a few pictures of them, and, and that's how I wound up doing this one. But uh, this one just was like a fun 
you know, picture in between commissions. Do you primarily work in watercolors or do you do acrylics as well? Well, I teach now um, a few classes, one in particular uh, acrylic class that I do teach. That I'm going to enroll That you're going in. to. We'll be That's doing it shortly. Exactly. Yes. And? And that one is in Rehoboth, Massachusetts at the Rehoboth Senior Center where uh, we have classes on Wednesday between 1 and 3, uh, and that's the acrylic. Uh, I teach watercolor. Today, I ran here straight, literally ran here straight from that class. That's uh, between 1 and 3. Uh, this one right here is actually, you know, where I started painting this, and I guess I could say I finished, was with, uh, this one was in Bristol at Bill. With Bill McLean. Bill McLean. Correct. Another that local man. artist who is fabulous. 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 He amazes me. I think what's about Bill is that you look at the painting and you go, wow, what detail. And then you get close and you go, like, it's just, it's amazing how his pictures come to life. You know, uh, a, a very, very nice man. So um, Bill helped me in my uh, oil class. I went to a few oil classes with him and uh, we became very good friends. Uh, my friend Gina also. Uh, I, I, Gina Croce. Gina Croce. Fabulous person. Fabulous. My, I spoke to her this morning. Um, she and I knew each other from Middletown because she comes from a military family yes. as well. And uh, she and I reconnected and uh, we painted together, uh, I'm going to say for like eight years. I mean every week, sometimes twice a week actually. I'm going to paint with her on Monday. Uh, love her. She became one of my best friends. And uh, she uh, c reconnected me even more, took me to another level with watercolor, I have to say. So I owe a lot of things to her. Um, but watercolor is my passion, particularly because it's very portable. Uh, it dries so fast, and so you don't have to worry about smudging it if you're going from point A to point B. And acrylic is second because it's usually dry by the time we leave our class. Uh, oil is something different. But oil. some of your students in acrylics have done some beautiful work. They really have. Um, I, I would like to think that I helped them through the process. You know what the thing is a lot of people don't realize they can paint. They're intimidated by it. But it's, you shouldn't be. It's, it's a process. You know, you, somebody gave me some kind of analogy the other day, uh, and I'm trying to think of what it was. You, you know, some things you just don't step into and, and do it right away. It's a process. It's a learning process. And if you can remember that, you could paint. You could absolutely paint. So um, When I found out a couple of weeks ago that some of your students in the acrylics class had just started painting a few months ago. I was blown away. Uh, thank you. They do such beautiful work. They do. Very talented people. They do. I think they had to get their confidence up because you go in and there. And you help them to get that. Because everybody could paint. And everybody could learn how to draw. And I teach you drawing as well. I do uh, private classes in the house where people, children, adults could come and I'll teach them how to draw since that was my original passion when I was a Where kid. did you go to art school? I didn't go to really art school. I, uh, again, I'm from Brooklyn, New York and I went to Brooklyn College where I majored in art. But uh, my earliest thing, uh, uh, I guess you could say, about knowing that I could draw and people actually knew I could draw was when I was in elementary school and they were doing something about the presidents of the United States. And uh, I, they had pictures of the presidents. Um, probably Lincoln was the first president <laughs> from when I was a kid. But anyway, there was pictures of all the presidents at the time. And they asked us all to draw one, and I did. And they were like, wow, this kid could draw. And so they literally made me draw all the presidents. I think, honestly, at that point, I think Kennedy was the last president. So I think I drew, and they lined the hallways with all my, my pictures, my paintings of the presidents. 
And, uh, and it was great because I got to get out of classes <laughs> to do that. So I was like, wow, this stuff is getting me out of classes, you know? I think I could go somewhere. But I always enjoyed, enjoyed drawing. That was the, the passion I had as a kid. So yeah. So uh, I, I still love it. It's very, it's very relaxing. When people sit and, and paint, I also do classes at Takwatan. Um, I do classes for the Kosher Kitchen in, in Cranston. I do classes in Bristol, uh, in Seekonk, the Seekonk Senior Center. I do watercolor. Uh, oh my God, I've done them in Swansea. When people, one thing I noticed, when people sit down to paint or draw, they forget about their troubles for that half hour, hour, two hours, their aches and pains. All they're concentrating is on the color to use, how to improve it, how to make it better. Everything else seems to just pass. And um, the troubles all fade away. It does, Brian. So to me, that's a wonderful thing if I could help people to, to forget that. Uh, when I did memory care people in, um, actually that was at Tamarisk for uh, the memory care. I was amazed. The people who could not, you know, had Alzheimer's or whatever, they would sit and paint and they were wonderful. And they, they enjoyed those two hours more than just about anybody. So even if they've never painted before, they were doing something that they really, really enjoyed. And, and that did my heart well. You know, that was really good. So uh, That's a very wonderful gift you have to share. Uh, well, I didn't know I had it until I really started doing it myself. You know, life was too busy before. So now I'm just thrilled that... Uh, I am very interested, having been a dog judge and everything, I am very interested in a lot of the rare breeds that we are losing sight of. The numbers, I was just looking at something this afternoon. The numbers of some of the rare breeds are really diminishing. And we're losing, popularity? We're losing these, these breeds. Why do you think that is? Is it popularity? Is it? Well, I shouldn't say this, but everybody wants a golden doodle. Uh, everybody wants a labradoodle. Yeah, it's because of the shedding, I guess. I mean, and they are looking at different breeds, and they're saying, I can't keep up with this breed. It'd be the, the upkeep is too much, or, uh, you know, or various reasons. Yeah. And uh, we're losing a lot of the breeds. That's a shame. That's a shame. Because I, I think that some breeds need to just stay as and they, they are. They need to be photographed and painted. Well, tell me which one we have to do, Brian. We will. And they are telling me this has been the fastest half hour we have ever had. So you're coming back. I'd be glad. To, when you said to me, uh, Daisy, do you think you could talk for a half hour? I said, is that all you're giving me? So. <laughs> well, you will be back. I would be glad to come back. Well, our 117th episode of Fur, Fins, and Feathers is coming to a close. And we will see you soon. Thank you very much, and Daisy, thanks again for coming. Thank you, Brian, for having me. It was fun. I hope we I didn't talk your hair off. So, yes. <laughs>